sit back and relax. Leave your daily grind behind. Feel free to apply your favorite recreational treatment. Let me know when you're ready. So listen, these days everybody has a story to tell or a story to sell. Mine goes like this. What? A few years ago I heard in one of these plant-based documentaries that the natural diet of humans is only plants. This sounded false right off the bat. And then, around the same time, the warriors of the meat-free world started pushing the same nonsense all over the social media. I knew it was a setup. We can survive on a plant-based diet eating the foods that come natural to us, eating the foods our body was designed to eat. Our body was designed to eat, designed to eat, designed to eat. You must be blind if you don't see it. So I put on my thinking cap. No, not that one. I decided to look into it. And while I'm at it, why not make some videos about it? In this season, I'm documenting my investigation into plant-based diets. Why? Well, someone has to do it. Here's one of their claims. Biologically and physiologically speaking, our bodies are more closely aligned to that of herbivorous animals rather than omnivorous animals. If it is true, then everything we knew about human biology is wrong. It would be the biggest discovery in the history of mankind. If it is true. <coughs> Hello, uh, Ryan speaking. This is the vegan police. I see what you did there. How dare you! Ah! I'm sorry if you feel that way. I'm doing it so that you can see where the truth ends and fake news begins. You can thank me later. So who are we? Humans belong to the fourth largest order in the animal kingdom, the order of primates. So not surprisingly, anatomically we are much closer to a baboon than to a lion, a bear or a raccoon. For example, baboons and humans have very similar hands. That's one of our relatives sucking the brains from an antelope. The beauty of nature. Looks like this cousin didn't get the memo of the plant-based congregation. Neither did this guy. Or this one. Or this. What are your hands for? Uh, like picking up things and... Picking fruits and uh, picking out root vegetables. And So what do primates eat with their gentle fruit-picking hands? Primates descended from small insect-eating mammals about 66 million years ago that were similar to what tree shrews look like today. Tree shrews are omnivores feeding on small animals, fruit, seeds, insects and the occasional booze from fermented plant juice. Cheers! Bugs! How these rat-like creatures became you and me is a story for another day. But 66 million years later, here we are. A big happy family with a fairly diverse appetite. <laughs> there are primate species that prefer only one kind of food. Like the monkey who grazes like a zebra. The gelada. This pygmy marmoset specializes in eating tree gum. Their other favorite food item? Butterflies! 
There's even a carnivorous primate, the all-time champion of staring contests, the ghoulishly cute tarsier that mainly eats insects but also preys on small vertebrates like birds, bats or snakes. There's a good boy. Most primates live in a tropical environment where they evolved, so overall they eat more plants than animals. Especially if we compare them to the order of carnivora. You know, like lions, bears, raccoons and so forth. What do you say to the people that say we're natural omnivores? Uh, uh, we aren't. When you look at natural omnivores like bears, raccoons and so forth, their anatomy and physiology is completely different from ours. Nice try! Next! Of course many primates are natural omnivores, insects are a big part of their diet, but snails, mussels, oysters, eggs, crabs and fish are also seen as food by many monkeys and apes. Even devoted fruit eaters like orangutans are not strictly vegan, as they eat insects and sometimes treat themselves with eggs, honey, fish and rarely small mammals are on the menu too. So yeah, humans are not the only primates capable of eating other animals. We just took it to the next level. According to a recent analysis made by the Department of Anthropology at Yale University, at least 89 non-human primate species prey on vertebrates, and meat-eating occurs in 12 of the 16 primate families. That's 75%, which means most primate families are omnivores. Should we tell these scientists that, according to some animal rights activists on YouTube and the plant-based doctor from What the Hell, they are wrong? That primates don't have sharp claws and can't open their mouth as big as carnivores so they can't be real meat-eaters? That would be silly, right? What about chimpanzees? our closest relatives. Are they herbivores? We know that chimpanzees are ripe fruit specialists. That's the food they eat the most frequently. But besides gathering plants, these hens are used for something else too. They regularly hunt at least 40 different species of animals, including monkeys, bush babies, bush pigs, small antelopes, birds, lizards, frogs, and in a recent study, they were recorded on camera as they killed and ate tortoises by banging them on tree branches. Hardly the peaceful vegetarians, as some people imagine them. Hunting is a widespread species typical behavior for chimps. These primates are highly efficient predators. Their kill rates are actually higher than the successful hunts of lions. You know the only kinds of animals that are supposed to eat meat? According to the game changers and the people who believe them. There is evidence that chimps even overhunt colobus monkeys, threatening them with extinction. Which shouldn't surprise us, knowing that a closely related ape wiped out entire species in history. Yes, I'm looking at you, Homo sapiens. Out of the two chimpanzee species, bonobos, also known as pygmy chimpanzees, hunt less frequently than regular-sized chimpanzees. But it varies per territory, groups and individuals, and researchers can easily miss a hunt, which can skew the accuracy of the statistics. Here's what we know about them. The frequency of hunting ranges from 2 up to 10 hunts per month, from every second week to almost once every 3 days. If we look at the amount of time they spend eating meat, overall it's not that much, could be as low as a few percent when they don't actively hunt. But researchers studying the largest known group of chimps estimated that meat accounted for 12.3% of feeding time during the 5 months when hunting was common. If we look at the weight of the meat consumed, the individual meat intake can vary greatly, some eating hardly any, and others eating large portions of meat, in some cases as much as 68 kilograms per year. 
To put it into perspective, the average meat consumption of modern humans is actually not much more than the highest estimate. So the most meat-loving chimpanzees would be somewhere here, above the UK, South Korea and Russia, and just below Canada. Of course, this is the average for humans and the top for our primate cousins. Most chimps eat less meat than that, but they're certainly capable, just like our last common ancestors, 6-7 million years ago. And these numbers don't even include all the invertebrates chimpanzees find when they forage. They can eat thousands of ants and termites every day, which account to about 4% of their diet, so these primates pretty much tick all the boxes of being an omnivore. It should come as no surprise that the favorite mascot of the plant-based propaganda is not the chimp, but the cow of the primate order, the gorilla, who has the most herbivorous diet of all apes. Vegans just love them. Gorillas eat mostly plants and they're big and strong. You get the idea. The largest and strongest animals on this planet are the land animals. The elephant, the rhino and the hippo all have one thing in common, they're herbivorous. Now gorillas share 98% of our DNA and their digestive tract is almost identical to ours. And apart from the occasional insects, again, they're herbivorous. And their digestive tract is almost identical to ours. Their digestive tract is almost identical to ours. I would be really surprised if this was true. Gorilla's food is low in nutrients, so they have to spend most of the day feeding, sitting on their bottoms munching on leaves and tree bark, eating about 10% of their body weight every single day. It could be as much as 45 pounds or 20 kilograms for an adult male. Of course, this means a huge amount of waste, which has to come out sooner or later. So they poop several times a day, every few hours. Here's a fun fact. Gorillas regularly ingest their own feces to absorb more nutrients. Great stuff. Be careful what you wish for. This is ridiculous! You think you're funny? I know, I know, sorry about that, I just couldn't resist. So what else do we know about gorillas? What about their digestive tract? Unlike humans, gorillas are well adapted to herbivorous lifestyle in the wild. Compared to us, they have a very large rib cage as they need room for the enlarged intestines in their huge bellies to store and ferment the bulky raw plant material they eat. They have an elongated skull with a ridge on the top called sagittal crest, which is an adaptation to their plant-heavy diet. This bony ridge supports the large and strong chewing muscles called temporalis, which is pretty useful when twigs and bark are a staple on the menu. What? Interestingly, there was a prehistoric ape-like hominin, Paranthropus boisei, which, unlike the direct ancestors of humans, was indeed herbivorous, feeding on mostly grasses and tubers, and had a gorilla-like sagittal crest and massive chewing muscles, with a jaw adapted to grinding side to side. Sadly, this vegan hominin proved to be a dead end in the evolution, as they went extinct around one million years ago. Stop it! Do you find this appetizing? Does the sight of lush green forests make you feel you're in a three Michelin star restaurant? If yes, congratulations, you're probably a gorilla and you can stop watching this video. But if you're a human, you must know that your digestive tract is quite different from how our hairy great ape relatives are built. Both humans and gorillas have one stomach, small intestine and large intestine, sometimes referred to as hindgut. The first part of the hindgut is called cecum, which looks like a pouch, followed by the long seculated tube called colon. 
So far so good, almost identical, right? Well, not so fast! As you can see, the majority of gorilla's gut volume consists of the large intestine, the cecum and the colon, and this makes complete sense. Herbivores need room to break down large amounts of tough plant fiber with the help of microbes and in gorillas this happens in the hindgut. Think of them as big composting bins. Humans, quite the opposite, with some very significant upgrades in our diet and food processing during our evolution we chose quality over quantity. What really sets the human gut apart from the digestive tract of gorillas is that it's completely reorganized, our cecum is small, our colon is shorter and the majority of the modern human gut volume consists of the small intestine, where most nutrients are absorbed with the help of digestive enzymes, which requires a much higher quality diet, relying on more easily digested, nutrient-dense foods rather than the slow fermentation of low-quality plant fibers. Luckily, we're perfectly capable of digesting other kinds of food. One of them is meat. It doesn't make us lions, bears, raccoons and so forth, we're still primates! It just means that anatomically we're not well suited to what herbivores have mastered. For example, turning plants into fat in their guts. Sheep or cattle that have a black belt in digesting plants can obtain as much as 70-80% of their energy from fermentation. Gorillas? About 60%. Humans are lagging behind with their 5 to 10 percent. Now, gorillas, apart from the occasional insects, again, they're herbivorous. And humans are not. Get over it. It's a fact. Of course, by now, you must have realized that facts don't get in the way of wishful thinking. Yes.